Day number two of competition for the individuals rolls on here. Up the line into the center of Madison, Wisconsin. It's the women are up next for test number six. Thanks for being with us, everybody. The whole gang is here. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram and Stacey Tovar. And we got Nikki Brazier and Mike Arsenault down on the competition floor. Your overall leader, no shock here, as Laura Horlaff comes in with 399 points after winning the prior test ski bag. It's her second test win of the competition. Only has one finish lower than ninth. She looks really good out there so far, Sean. I really like to see her cross that finish line first in test number five. Let the momentum carry on, boys. And Laura Horlaff showing some rare emotion as she absolutely blitzed ski bag the prior test but it is close behind her only 62 points separate second from seventh that's emma lawson from emma tall test number six is helena classic benchmark three rounds for time starts with a 400 meter run 12 bar muscle ups 21 alternating dumbbell snatches 35 pounds Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. Stacy. what are you watching there? You gotta run like you stole it. Just go for it. Hold nothing back and burn the boats. Blow them up. Let's go. To quote Apollo Creed, there is no tomorrow. <laughs> Let's send it down to the competition floor with Nikki Brazen. Well, Helen is a classic CrossFit benchmark. Athletes all over the world are used to doing it in their affiliates with running, pull-ups, and kettlebell swings. But down here on the competition floor, the athletes will be on the pull-up bar behind me doing bar muscle-ups, a higher level gymnastics skill. And instead of kettlebell swings, they will be doing single arm dumbbell snatches with a 35 pound dumbbell. And for more on the run, let's send it out to Mike Arsenault. Thank you very much, Nikki. The last time athletes ran outside the Coliseum was back in 2021. There are two tweaks two years later. First, the course has pretty practically doubled in size, and there are a couple hundred fans lining the course to cheer these athletes on, and they'll be feeding off that crowd energy, especially the first couple of heats, because the athletes will have to be full throttle the entire way through, with a cut to 30 athletes looming after this test. Here's your start list. Seven athletes in this opening heat. Abigail Domit right now sits in 33rd place overall. She's one of the athletes who's trying to get herself on the right side of that cut line. She's right on the cusp, Sean. And you know what? She has worked on her mindset and her mentality this entire offseason. So she's one I'm looking for just because of what's happening between the years. She knows what she needs to do to get in the top 30 at the end of this test. Yeah, he's not starting in a straight line. Again, it's like a, a track meet. He had that arc start. So the distance on the run evens out throughout the test. When you look at Abigail Domit right off the bat, athletic background, gymnastics, cheerleading, track and field. Pretty good combo for this test. Domit is the woman who's out front on this first 400 meter run. She's also one of the taller, though, athletes, though, uh, Chase. So she knows she needs to get a little ahead of the pack there in the run because the cycle time on the bar muscle ups, because of those long limbs, are going to be a little bit slower than someone's uh, shorter. And likewise on the dumbbell. So by the time you get from the floor to overhead on someone taller versus someone shorter, she's looking a little bit more time on, on that dumbbell there. Saw that play out with the men. Will Morat, most notably, was able to make a comeback on that portion of the test and take his heat. And Ellen Anganez and Abigail Domit, followed by Kaha Budebs and Carolyn Stanley. Now the 12 bar muscle ups. 102 total scored repetitions in this test. And at the 13 rep bar, that is when they will advance for their first set of 21 dumbbell snatches at the 35 pound, 15 kilo dumbbell. And the athletes must pass through the dip portion of the bar muscle up so they cannot glide and just kind of lock it up at the top of the bar there. Shahad Budebs and Carolyn Stanley. 
are in the lead, and Budabs at the top of your screen is going to be the first one of the dumbbell sets had to adjust her grips. And this is a test where really every second matters, and that's going to cost her some time. And she just got a no rep, so that's going to double it up. I know that feeling. That exact same thing happened to me last night on the floor. Abigail Dolan, Carolyn Stanley, Manon Engadez have now all passed Shahad Budebs for the lead. Coming all the way from Dubai, trained out of Massachusetts there for a little while. Her coach just happened to be the third place finisher and the third fittest in the 35 to 39 division. Who is second? Stacey Toll. <laughs> Someone I may know. But on Engadez is going to be the first woman back to the 400 meter run, followed by Stanley and Domit. First of five heats for the women here. It's the best feeling, though. Three rounds for time. It's just so great knowing that after that second round, oh, I just have one more round to go. You did the classic version of Helen earlier this week, and we talked during the men, the challenge of the second of three runs. You just have to keep the same pace, which is fast, which is unbroken, which is really hard. And that's when the mentality kind of comes in, you know? It's like, okay, just get through this second round, just knowing you have just one more round left. Kind of eases things a little bit, but there is, you know, burn the boats. There is no speed other than just go. Manon Angadez is your leader, and this might not be the only international competition that she competes in in the next year. She's a Belgian champion in weightlifting at the 69 kilo class, and she's trying to make the Olympics in 2024. This is her first appearance here at the CrossFit Games. Haganez, Dilman, and Stanley. Your top three right now, now into round two of the bar muscle-ups. 12 reps they have to complete at the 47 rep mark. They'll start their second round of the 21 dumbbell snatches. Doman in the middle now with five reps remaining. She and Stanley trading the lead here. Hanging A is just about a rep behind. Shahad Budep, left side of your screen, is in fourth. Followed by Emily DeRoy. And Abigail Doman in the lead. Here's Caroline Stanley. Getting to work on round number two and now and on Hanging A. And Abigail's cycle speed a bit slower than Agonese and Stanley. And it looked like her grip is getting a little fatigued on those last 12 bar muscle ups. A 68 rep mark is what they're looking to hit. Grips are tired. <laughs> yeah. <I> mean, <laughs> what know. could they have done the last five tests? This will be Manon Engenez, who will be the first woman of the game under the run called by Carolyn Stanley. So Abigail Doman loses two spots on that second round of dumbbell snatches. Seven minute time cap here. Shouldn't be a problem for any of these athletes. As Agnes looks over her left shoulder and sees Carolyn Stanley, now Abigail Dolan rounding the corner. Agnes in 35th place overall. Again, we cut down the 30 athletes after this. She has 130 points. She needs a strong result here to leapfrog five other athletes and get herself inside the cut line. On this final curve here where we see the athletes speeding up a little bit it's all downhill at this point and into the coliseum 
Abigail Dover has managed to catch up and now pass Carolyn Stanley. And leaving the second place behind Menon Angadez. And she needs to do this. Her transition to the pull-up bar once she gets into the Coliseum has been very fast. But then again, her cycle time on the snatch just slows her down a little bit. So she just needs to remember that this is the third and final round. Transition quickly to the bar. No time for chalk. Jump up. You look great. And just rip and grip on that dumbbell snatch. 35 pounds for these individual women. It's nothing they haven't seen before. No, but if, if you get top, depending on that grip, the other thing, too, is you think about classic Helen. Can you hang on to those last 12 pull-ups? They just have to be bar muscle-ups right here in the middle. True. Abigail Dover, the first woman to get to work on her final set of 12 bar muscle up, 81 reps. She's only nine away from that. Aganez and Stanley right behind her. They're the only three women right now on their final set of bar muscle up. Three minutes left before we hit the time cap. Emily DeRoy working her way back to the pull up bar. As Dover, Aganez, and Stanley fight for first place in this first of five heats in test number six, the halfway point of the 2023 and over across the games. And now Dover onto the dumbbell, and here comes Stanley, and then now Aganez. Now Aganez has been the fastest on this portion. Number two, that's the mark they gotta hit to close this thing out. And it's Gilman and Stanley neck and neck. Angane is about three reps behind, and now Stanley is taking the lead. Six reps to go for her. Final rep, this might come down to a foot race. It's gonna be Carolyn Stanley who takes off first. Abigail Domit is going to be second, and Manon Anganez will finish third. 907.14 seconds for Carolyn Stanley. At least Shahad Budevs is the leader on the floor right now. Budevs out of the United Arab Emirates. This is her third career appearance at the Cross of Games, second as an individual. In 2021, she was here on the team. They finished 35th, also here in 2019. And she is across. And Emily DeRoy is in. That's Victoria Campos. Now Michelle Baznet. The top of your screen onto her final 21 dumbbell passes. Compass is going to come across. Leaves Michelle Baznet out there on the floor. Baznet, 37th place overall. So she had a lot of ground to make up to get inside the cut line. So this could be it for Baznet. Less than 20 seconds before we hit the time cap. That's going to get inside that. That's the final rep. And heat number one is in the books. 907.14 seconds for Carolyn Stanley is your top time. With four heats remaining. She, Abigail Domit, and Manon Anganez. Stacey had a great battle for the top spot. Yeah, the start. They did. It was a battle back and forth. But I tell you what. Abigail used that back half of the run, that downhill slope to kind of catch up with the pack. Her transition over to the bar was a lot faster. In the end, though, there she goes. Running away with it. Carolyn Stanley does some great work on the dumbbell. 907.14 seconds. Edging Abigail Doman out by two seconds. It's Manon Anganez who rounds out the top three, followed by Shahad Boudevs. D2 coming up next. We'll be joined in the booth by Brooke Wells. Stay with us, everybody.
Closing things out in day number two inside the Coliseum here at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin as women's test number six, the halfway point of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Brooke Wells is an eight-time CrossFit Games athlete. She has competed here at the CrossFit Games, finished fifth in 2020, has won three events in her career, and she's been nice enough to join us here in the booth. I know this is a little bit of a different experience for you as a fan, but you are here watching your sister. What has that experience been like for you cheering her on? It's obviously been really different being like a spectator and not being on the competition floor, but I'm just kind of like living through her, trying to help her as much as I can, and just supporting her. I've watched her work so hard all season, so getting to see her show that has been a really cool experience. Do you get to train with her every single day? So, like, leading into the season, yes, and, like, semifinals, I kind of took a little bit of a break after semis, like, rehabbing some injuries. But, yes, we do train together every single day on, like, a normal daily basis. That's so cool. What an awesome experience, yes. Test number six is Helena. It's a spin on a classic classic, Stacy. It is. Being the 20th anniversary of our classic benchmark, Helen, we have Helena. Three rounds for time, 400 meter run, 12 bar muscle ups, 21 dumbbell snatches, 35 pound dumbbell. Eight women will be on the floor, including Brooke's sister, Sydney. Now Sydney right now, Brooke comes in in 27th place overall on the right side of the cut line. What advice, if any, did you give her coming into this test? Um, she likes to kind of like send it, I feel like, in most workouts. So I'm kind of like, be a little bit conservative in the, in the beginning and then whatever you have at the end, that's when you really give it your all and whatever you have left. So I'm excited to watch her. She's an incredible runner and I think this will be a really good workout for her. Stand by. Heat two of five is underway. Carolyn Stanley has her top time at nine minutes, 7.14 seconds and we we'll start with that 400 meter run. You've been in this environment in the Coliseum. What kind of effect does the crowd here sometimes have on you as far as your plan is concerned in the world? Oh, the community is everything. I feel like when you are like hurting really bad, you kind of look up, everyone's cheering for you and it gives you like a big extra push that you need. It is the best feeling coming into the Coliseum or hearing your name. We talked about that earlier today. You know, you hear Brooke Wells yeah. and the lead, that momentum, and then they, the roar of the crowd just like gives you that extra boost you need. Yeah, when you're it, in it's so really much physical pain. <laughs> yeah. It's very helpful when you need it. Well, I know obviously semifinals didn't go the way you wanted, but what do you yeah. take out of that experience that you can build on now for next season? Um, I definitely learned that there's like never any points to lose, so like. Just get points wherever you can. And um, I mean, my fire is like lit. I'm so ready to get back. Um, that's the main thing is just kind of fueling the fire this weekend. The first 400 meter run is now done. And it's Sydney Wells, who's right behind Ella Rubier. Shelby Neal's up there as well. Matilda Garns, Sarah Kaya, and Kelly Baker. So now 12 bar muscle ups, 102 total score repetitions in this test, 34 reps per round. Now the athletes do have to pass through that dip portion of the bar muscle up. I didn't see Matilda Garns there in the middle of your screen, lane five, get a no rep for not passing through the dip. Now, bar muscle ups and any gymnastics pulling is her jam, so she was just, you know, ready to get going there, but Slowing things down with that dip. Sarah Kaya, Kelly Baker, now Sydney Wells and Ella Rune are on to the dumbbell. 35 pounds, 15 kilos, 21 snatches here at the 34 rep mark. They will be done with round number one. How would you attack this? Man, this workout honestly looks brutal, but it's very obvious you need to try to go unbroken on the bar muscle ups and the kettlebell, I mean the dumbbell. Um, I would push the run, but not too much to where you're too tired. I would try to make sure I had enough energy in the end and really push the last run. Sarah Kaya, right side of your screen. She's trying to hold off Kelly Baker and El Rubia. Rubia on the left side of your screen. And Kaya, it's going to be the first woman back to the 400 meter run. Now, Ella Rune, followed by Fee Sagafi, Shelby Neal, Kelly Baker. Alexa Williams, and then Sydney Wells just kind of 
two people on the way out. That's what you expect from a college all-star, right? Four years running track at the University of um, Missouri there. Yeah, for sure. But running is one thing you don't have to worry about with her. <laughs> and that's what we know, Brooke, is, you know, you play your strengths really in yeah. your workout. So if running is your thing, that's where you make up the most ground, knowing you have a little extra time. And you talked about the length of athletes, too. Your sister's a little bit taller. Yeah, how tall are you? Five, six. That's pretty tall in our yeah. sport here. So, yeah, she might be a little bit slower on the bar muscle-ups and picking the dumbbell on and off the floor, but if she's got to make a ground and she's a strong runner, that's where she's got to do it. So we expect her to kind of make her way back up towards the pack. And Cindy Wells right now has moved into third place in this run behind Sarah Kaya and Leila Runye. And Runye is looking like she's going to pass. Sarah Kaya is, Cindy Wells has made up a ton of ground here. And remember, this back half of the 400 is the downhill portion of the run. So the first two are a slight uphill. It's not much, but these athletes' legs are tired, and they're going to feel every impact, every step as they run up. Sayer Kaya leads the way. Runye and Wells right behind her. Kaya making her second career appearance at the CrossFit game. She was here last year. She finished 29th overall. So, Brooke, I hear your mom CrossFit's out of a local gym and your dad CrossFit's out of his garage. Yes. That's pretty rad. Yeah, I mean, it's a family affair for sure. It's really cool. My dad actually got me started in CrossFit, so all credit to him. And then my mom kind of started to, after, like, my first two CrossFit games, she's like, I want to see what you do. So she started. And all of us are hooked. That's <laughs> so great. There is Sydney Wells, who right now is in a tie for third place with Shelby Mia. Sarah Kaya and Ella Rubio, pardon me, are your top two. Kaya is on her final rep, and now she's back to the dumbbell. For 21 more reps. With the 68 rep mark, she will be done. Top of your screen is Ella Rubio. And now Sydney Wells is off along with Shelby Neal and Fisa Goffey. Kelly Baker, bottom of your screen, in the long black pants is on to her second set of 21 dumbbell snatches. Kaya on the right in late eight. She's your leader. On the left, you got Ella Runier, Shelby Neal, and Sydney Wells. She just got hit with a no rep. I think you have to repeat that on the other other. So here's Kaya down here. She's done. Back out on the run here. And Shelby Neal has moved into second. And Ella Rudier into third. Pisa Goffey's done. Kelly Baker's done. And now Sidney Wells is closing out. They'll find a left. And this is where Wells did up a ton of ground on the last 400 meters. She's off of a sprint. I'm so jealous of her running form. Yeah. Like, it is just beautiful looking <laughs> at her just prance like a little deer out there, you know? I always know she's coming for me on a running workout. She just never looks tired when she does. But talk about a great training partner to have. Yeah. Like, I would love that if I had that. And I do, you know, of course, but yeah. you do have your own sister, nonetheless. Yeah, but it gets very competitive. <laughs> Sydney has already wheeled in Fee Sadafi. Trying to track down Ella Rubier in third. As the field is spread out here in the second heat, the top time is 907.14 seconds. And Carolyn Stanley in heat number one. Back. See here, Kaya just needs to hang on to this run. She's done well on the bar muscle up. She doesn't look fatigued at all. Her transition is very fast and very smooth, and we know what she can do on that dumbbell. So if she can just hold the, hold the pace here. She's looking at the uh, time to beat. Here comes Sayer Kaya. And now Shelby Neal. And Sydney Wells passes up El Runye on that run. Sarah Kaya, right side of your screen, has got to get to the 81 rep mark before she gets to move back to the dumbbell. And Shelby Neal down there in lane two, she is in the 29th place, so she cannot afford to lose any points knowing that that cut takes place after 
after this test, we will go down from 40 individual women to 30. And she knows that. She can hear the crowd. She can hear the announcers there on the floor. And Sarah Kai is the first woman to the dumbbell bottom of your screen. There's the cut line. El Rune, who's doing well here in this heat, is only one point back of Kelly Baker. They are both in this heat. And so here Kaya is two points out from that cut. She's 32 right now. We dropped to 30. Sydney Wells is the third woman to the dumbbell here. That's good for her. And now Kelly Baker in those long black pants has started her dumbbell snatches. 102 total reps, and Sarah Kaya only has. Now one more, and Sarah Kaya is going to take the heat, and she will have a new top time at 8.55.34 seconds. There goes Shelby Neal. That's good for her. She looks to stay alive. And Kelly Baker making up some ground. Her judge's hand is in the air. She only has a couple reps left, so Baker Putting on a charge here in the back half of the test, and she will get across. And here comes Sydney Wells. B. Sagafi is in. 90 seconds before we hit the time down. Ella Rune is in. Now Alexia Williams has finished up. And that leaves Matilda Garns as the last woman out on the floor, and she is done. So. Everybody getting well inside that 11 minute time cap, but it's Sarah Kaya with a new top time at 8.55.34 seconds. She executed that perfectly. It started out with our girl Sydney. Came out blazing, but in the end, so here Kaha. Kaha that cycle time just a little bit faster a little bit shorter athlete ran hard went right to the bar muscle at bar got right to work quick cycle time on the dumbbell snatch and came out with the time to beat now 855 855.34 seconds for sarah kaya your top time shelby neal finishes in second that's going to be good enough for the second best time, and it's Kelly Baker in third. Brooks, thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate it. Best of luck with the court. Looking forward to seeing you back on the competition floor. Thank you for having me, and thank you. I plan to be back here next year. I have no doubt that will happen. Me either. Two heats down. Three remain here for the women in Test 6.
three heats remain in test number six for the women. On day number two of competition at the 2023 Noble Crossing Games, we're closing things out inside the Coliseum here at the Alliant Energy Center. And we are glad you are with us, everybody. I'm Sean Whitman, alongside the second fittest woman in the 35 to 39 year old division, Stacey Tobar, and Nikki Grazer is down on the competition floor. Test number six might look familiar to some people. We gotta amp it up a little bit here for these games athletes. Yeah, why not? 20th anniversary of our classic benchmark workout, Helen. So Helen up, three rounds for time, 400 meter run, 12 bar muscle ups, 21 dumbbell snatches, 35 pound dumbbell hand. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. What do you got? Run like you stole it. Go out there and get it. Burn the boats. There is no retreat here. Adrian Bosman, competition director, told us you got to have the guts to race. Eight women will be on the competition floor for this third heat. And in lanes seven and eight, Bailey Rail and Emma Carey. Right now safe as far as the cut is concerned, but trying to move themselves closer to a spot inside the top yeah. four. Bailey Rail, two top 10 finishes. Emma Carey, and you know, he started the week with that horrible uh, fight, drive, stumble, crash, whatever you want to call it, and one top 10 finish. But has not let that stop her. She has bounced back, shown us that she's just here to do it, no matter what it takes. It's Paige Semenza out front of Emma Carey, followed by Bailey Rail was in third, but Lisa Puliano has now moved in front of her. First 400 meter run here. Paige Semenza, 17th place overall. Very safe as far as the cut is concerned. And much like regular Helen, benchmark Helen, Sean, we know it's just a pace. It's an uncomfortable pace. It's an unbroken, fast pace. And it all starts with that run. And it's about maintaining that high heart rate throughout. Yeah, Ellie Turner is in this heat. And she is way behind. And she, after the prior test, looked like she might be having some sort of pain issue as Paige Semenza, Elisa Puliano, and Emma Carey are the first three women to the bar muscle. So we keep our eye out for Ellie Turner. There she is. I also noticed she had some tape on her low back. I didn't get a good angle there, but I'm wondering if she's not having a, maybe a low back that's like interacting with her like hip or. Well, I talked to Adrian Conway earlier. He's, with, he's been talking to athletes in the world up there. He said he watched uh, Ellie warm up for the prior test, the ski bag, and that she was just using a 25 pound plate and was really laboring with it. So we keep an eye on Ellie Turner. But it is Emma Carey and Elisa Fugliano right now who are in the lead. Here comes Paige Semenza followed by Bailey Rail. Emma Carey is looking for another great finish here. She's kind of been all over the board ever since that bike fault her at the earlier start of this, of this uh, weekend. But 16th in the sand uh, ski bag, so I expect it. A better finish from her this test. Emma Carey, who is hoping to make an appearance here at the CrossFit Games as an individual last year, but her season got derailed by a back injury. She made her first appearance as an individual in 2021. She finished 16th overall. She's a former teenage champion, finishing first in the 14 to 15 year old division in 2019. So Emma Carey and Elisa Fugliano back out on the run. I like the pace she's setting here. She's not holding back. I like to see that coming from her. Well, Emma Carey had an aggressive pace to start earlier in the day with Alpaca and then ran into a wall on her second round of legless road climb. Right now in front here, in heat three of test number six for the women, the halfway point. For them here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games will be cut down to 30 athletes after the second day of competition. You see a nice big arm swing there. You're also seeing a relaxed grip. We're about to approach 12 bar muscle ups. We've all done hell of a 
before. At least I hope so. If you've been around the CrossFit world for a little while, your grip gets hairy, thing. you know, like reps 9, 10, 11, 12, those last four or five reps, you feel it. So a nice, relaxed grip when you're running will set you up for some success there on the ball. There's Paige Simenzen all in third place. And Emma Carey will be the first woman back to start round number two of her bar muscle ups. You'll notice she's going to actually pass Ellie Turner here as she's making her way back into the stadium and Ellie making her way back out to start round three. Well, Ellie Turner's in 19th place overall with 224 total points. Right now, very safe as far as the cut is concerned. She has some insurance, but she definitely wants to avoid a last place finish, but that looks like that might be inevitable at this point. But Emma Carey is your leader. Five reps, now four reps to go at the 47 mark. She will move back to the dumbbell for those 21 snatches at 35 pounds. Lisa Juliano only a few reps behind. Emma can feel that pressure. And that's helping her keep pushing that pace. And Carey is the first woman to her dumbbell snatches. And now Alicia Puliano on the left side of your screen is second. Eight fifty-five point three four seconds is the top time for Sarah Kaya from the prior heat. You'll see. You'll see all these athletes muscle snatching the, this dumbbell, 35 pounds, not a problem. However, you would be able to power snatch this if you would like. But it's just so much faster to cycle just by kind of pulling that off the floor and using your powerful hips to lock it out over top. Emma Carey is way out in front here in heat number three. Lisa Fuliano will be the second woman out on the run. Now Ellie Turner is just making her way back into the stadium here to see Emma Carey. Opening up a lead here on this third and final 400 meter run. And it's all downhill on this back 400. See her looking over her shoulder. She's feeling the heat, but she's not slowing down. Carey's best finish so far in this competition was in test number two, the pink chipper. She took fourth place in that test, but after that, she took a 17th, a 39th, and then a 16th in ski bag. So looking to get back on track here. And the time to beat in previous heats is 8.55, 9.07 after that. The seconds will matter in this test, and we saw that with the men, where 11 seconds was the difference between about 10 or 12 spots on the leaderboards. It comes down to this third and final round. I mean, keep the transitions fast. Pick up the pace, actually, if you can. Get right on that bar. Emma Carey is now back to the bar muscle and she is all by herself. When she gets to the 81 rep mark, she'll head to the dumbbell for the final time. Lisa Fuliano is now back inside the Alliant Energy Center. And Emma knows there's still two more heats after this left to go. Two more reps for Emma Carey. And now back to the dumbbell for the final time. She's got a minute to beat Sarah Kaya's time. No problem. Both heads of the dumbbell need to touch the floor, showing control and lockout at the top. Cycle time down is just quick flash across the face, switching hands. It's the fastest you can. These are the right here is a perfect example of moving the dumbbell as quickly as you possibly can. 
one that has to go from the ground and directly overhead. One has to be locked out for the left to count. And Emma Carey's been perfect so far. Final two reps for her. And Emma Carey's going to set your new top time. And she gets herself across the finish line with plenty of time to spare. Emma Carey, your new top mark at 838.61 seconds. Lisa Fuliano is now your leader on the floor. She's towards the bottom of your screen in the dark shorts. And now she is done. To put this in perspective, Sean, about a two minute and 15 second pace per round. And there goes Paige Semenza. Now Bailey Rail is in. Bailey Rail, 22nd place overall. We're going to get some more breathing room as far as the cut line is concerned. Rebecca Vinison also came across the finish line at 917.19 seconds. Right now, that's 10th place in the test for Vinison. And it's only a three second difference between Bailey Rail and her there. So that was a close race. Christine Kohlengrand is across, and Amanda Barnhart is now gone. Ellie Turner is the only woman left out there, and she has a minute to go. And as you mentioned, Stacey, that back is heavily taped. Yeah, she also looks like she might be limping on that right side a little bit, so, so unfortunate. The crowd getting behind her. It's the best feeling ever. You can see she's fighting back tears as she makes her way back to the bar. Best community around. She's in some pain. She also knows, you know, we cut tonight to 30 athletes. Turner's family on the right, she takes a spill on that crash cover, you can tell. And Ellie Turner is just not her usual self, and we hope that she is okay and admire the gutsy effort that she just put forth here. This heat belongs to Emma Carey. 8.38.61 seconds. Set the top time. Lisa Pugliano is going to finish in second. Right now, that time good enough for third place in the test. And it's Paige Semenza, followed by Rail and Vinison, rounded out the top five. Heat four coming up next.
Two heats remain here for the women as we close out the second day of competition at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. We're going to be inside and outside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center for test number six. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Goodman with Stacey Tovar. We've got Nikki Grazer down on the competition floor. Test number six is Helena. It probably looks familiar. Three rounds per time. 400 meter run, 12 bar muscle ups, 21 dumbbell snatches, 35 pound dumbbell. The recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. Run like you stole it. Get out of here. Burn the boats. Blow them up. There is only one speed, and that is full speed for this test. Here are the eight women who will be on the competition floor. One of them in lane number four is Jamie Simmons. She sits in ninth place overall, and there's Emily Rolf, who's trying to get into the top 10, 11th place with 280 total points. Talk about Emily Rolf, engine-based workouts, her jam. She's licking her chops over this thing. And then Jamie Simmons mentioned her down in lane four right next to Emily Rolf, ninth place overall. Solid runner, great at gymnastics movements, like our muscles. Making her first individual appearance here at the Crossing Games is 2020. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Heat four is underway. We only have one heat remaining after this. The top time belongs to Emma Carey. You just saw that in heat number three. Eight minutes, 38.61 seconds. First setter out in front along with Emily Wolf. Emily Flores is there from Daniel Brand on the inside. Wolf Brand in the first setter, your top three. Jamie Simmons working her way towards the front, passing both Bethany Flores and Olivia Kerstetter. Flores hiding right behind Emily Rolf there. Rolf in the lead. Simmons in second. As this group is all on the same pace. Heading back into the Coliseum for their 12-bar muscle ups. And much like classic benchmark Helen, it's an uncomfortable pace right out of the get-go. Catherine Davis out of Bethany Flores, Jamie Simmons, and Emily Rolf looking to get to the pull-up bar at the same time, and they do. And now 12 bar muscle ups, 34 total reps in each round. Scoring half of the top of your screen, keep an eye on that. The leader's name in the heat will be on the far left side. The number in the white box will indicate how many repetitions that athlete has completed. The number in the white box next to everyone else's name will indicate how many repetitions they trail. Jamie Simmons is out through 12 and 13. She's done. She'll be the first woman to the dumbbell. 35 pounds, about 15 kilos there. 21 snatches. I like her sense of urgency, Jamie Simmons there in lane number four. I haven't seen many athletes get off the pull-up bar after doing their 12-bar muscle-ups and kind of trot to the dumbbell, and she did. She went there, was like just pulled it off the floor and started working. That's the pace you need to make a move. And she's sitting right there in ninth. I think she wants more than just ninth. Well, Simmons is done, and she'll head back out on the run. Paige Powers will be second, followed by Bethany Flores, Danielle Brandon, Karen Freyova, and Catherine Davidson. And Emily Rolf, of course, the back here now, but immediately passes first ever on her way out of the building. She's a little bit of a taller athlete, so her cycle time on the bar and on the dumbbell may be just slightly slower. We talked about it earlier in heats, you know, you do have to play to your strengths, so if you're a good runner, that's where you got to make up the ground, but you also you got to transition fast, and you have to just get right to work on the dumbbell. This is Jamie Simmons' fifth individual appearance at the CrossFit Games. She's never finished lower than 12th, and has stood on the podium before in 2019. 
She finished in third. She's been here on a team. That was back in 2016. She was on the podium with CrossFit Yass in that competition. She's had a little bit of experience underneath the lights then, Sean. Paige Powers and Bethany Flores are the next two, followed by Danielle Brandon and Emily Walks, uh, former two-time champ Captain David got in that pack as well as Cindy moving her way back into the building for round number two of the 12-bar muscle-ups. Smooth transition right up on that pull-up bar. Athletes must pass through the dip position. They cannot just extend up and over the bar and lock out the position. Simmons has five reps to go here on the second set. 47 rep mark will be when she's done with this portion of this round. Bethany Flores is fighting with Paige Powers for second. Daniel Brandon. Is also in that game. Captain David's daughter in the long black pants right side of the screen is moving to fifth. Simmons gets right to work on the dumbbell. There's that trot again. She turned the straps, turned her grips around, and got right to work. Matthew Flores will be the second woman in the dumbbell, followed by Paige Powers. Now Danielle Brandon is in fourth. Here comes Captain David's daughter along with Karim Frayova in the blue on the right side of your screen. Dumbbell has to go from the ground directly overhead in the lockdown position for that repetition of track. We have to alternate arms. Jamie Simmons is now done with one more rep. And on the left side, she'll take off on the third and final 400 meter run. And she is way out in front here. She got in the door after a 400 meter run at about 4.05. She's leaving about 90 seconds later. She's moving fast. Now, Bethany Flores and Paige Powers are done at the same time, like we saw in round number one. Daniel Brandon stays in fourth. And now, Colleen Freyova and Catherine Davis out are done, and Emily Rawls has finished as well. These are the first ever Jamie women on the dumbbell. Jamie Simmons continues to put a lot of real estate between her and the women chasing her here in this fourth of five heats. right now for Jamie Simmons, but we still have a heat to go. But Simmons cannot let off the gas here. Looking strong. Using that back 400, which has a slight downhill slope to her advantage. For the final time, Jamie Simmons works her way inside the Coliseum. 33 final reps, 12 on the four guard of our muscle ups, and then 21 on the dumbbell. And she is running like she stole it. She sure is. That right there was about a 90 second 400 meter run. Here comes Bethany Flores, and she's had a little bit of distance between herself and Paige Powers, and it's Danielle Brandon who will be in fourth place to start the state of final round. Emily Rolf is back in. Just like classic benchmark, it's those last few reps on the polar bar that just sting that much more. Simmons now for 21 reps on the dumbbell, 838.61. That's your top time. From Emma Carey and Jamie Simmons looking to beat that here. She's got to get to the 102 rep mark, so 12 remaining here for her. Simmons out with six left. Picking up speed, you can see that cycle time. Just picking up a little bit more with each and every rep. Final rep for Jamie Simmons, and Jamie Simmons will set the new time to beat with one heat remaining. 
27.12 seconds for Simmons, and now the fight for second in the heat between Bethany Flores and Paige Powers. Flores right now is getting the best of that, and she is done. Flores is in. She'll take second place in the heat that time right now. Good enough for third place in the test as Paige Powers has made it across the finish line. Danielle Brandon is in. Honey Freyova will be the next woman across, followed by Emily Rolfe. Yeah. Catherine Davis' daughter and Olivia Kerstead, who the last two women on the floor as the former two-time fittest woman on earth, is in. Now Olivia Kerstead, the youngest athlete in the competition at just 17 years old, has to close out her test with 21 dumbbell snatches. First center, a former two-time teenage champion, first in the 14 to 15 year old division in 2021, first in the 16 to 17 year old division in 2022, and this is her individual debut here at the CrossFit Games. The future is right. Olivia Kerstetter is done, and she is in. But it's Jamie Simmons who takes the heat and now has the best time we've seen so far at 8 minutes, 27.12 seconds. And Stacy, this one was not even close. She ran away with it, literally burned the boats. Simmons, 827.12, followed by Flores. And then Paige Powers. Rounds out the top three, followed by Danielle Brandon and Kareen Freyo. The final heat up next. Thank you, Dave. Wrapping up competition for the individuals here inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center. We are at the halfway point of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram and Stacey Tovar. We got Nikki Brazier and Mike Arsenault down on the competition floor. You heard Tommy Marquez mention that we're going to emulate this test in the gym. It ain't going to look anything like these women are about to make it look. Here are your overall standings coming in. It's Laura Harbaugh hanging on to a 10-point lead over Emma Lawson, and it's Alex Kazan only up seven points on former overall leader Alexis Raptis. Test number six looks familiar to a lot of CrossFit enthusiasts, but we got to amp it up here for these athletes. Three rounds per time, 400-meter run, 12 bar muscle-ups, 21 dumbbell snatches, 35-pound dumbbell. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. There is only one speed here. Run like you stole it. Get out of here.
here and burn the boats. Blow them up. Let's send it down to Nikki Brazier on the competition floor. Well, you guys said it. Helen is a benchmark workout that affiliates all over the world know how to do with running, pull-ups, and kettlebell swings. But down here on the competition floor for Helena, the athletes will be doing bar muscle-ups on that rig behind me, a higher-level gymnastics skill, and they will be doing single-arm dumbbell snatches instead of those kettlebell swings. For more on the run, let's send it out to Mike Arsenault. When you hear a 400-meter run, you probably think of one lap around a running track. This court athletes will be much more difficult. I'm staying fairly significant. Find these athletes will have to navigate on the other side of this high school cross team from Rochester, Minnesota. There's a corresponding decline and then sharp turns on this course as well. Nevertheless, the athletes, regardless of the difficulty, will have to push the pace because in the immortal words of Cheryl Crow, the first cut is the deepest. <laughs> Well played, Mr. Arsenault. Here are your eight women in this fifth and final heat. Your overall leader, Laura Horvath, will be right in the middle of the floor. This is the first time she's worn the leader's jersey since her rookie year in 2018. From an emerging star to the first star, Annie Ferris' daughter, a former two-time champion, the only woman to compete at the CrossFit Games in three different decades, and she is within striking distance of a podium spot here. And Sean, Adrian Conway, was talking about the question from Adrian Bosman, did I cook these athletes too much? Well, I hope you like your athletes well done, because they are gonna be cooked thoroughly after this test. That's Gabby Magallo, who was out from early on that first 400 meter run. She's followed by Emma Tom, Alice Kazan. Laura Horde out there in the leader's jersey, working her way up towards the front on the outside. G Shock is giving you the chance to win a new G Shock watch, a CrossFit Level 1 seminar, and more than $400 in CrossFit swag. You can scan the QR code on your screen. Terms and conditions apply. The pace right out of the gate is so uncomfortable. It is fast. It is unbroken. It is just all out. But that is the right pace, an uncomfortable pace. If you feel like you're going too fast, you have chosen the right pace for this test. Gabby Magawa leads the way back into the Coliseum here. And now the women will complete 12 Bar muscle ups. They have to go from a hang to a supported position and they have to pass through a dip at the top. Keep an eye on the scoring hat on the top of your screen. The leader in the heat will be on the far left side, and the number of repetitions that athlete has completed will be in the white box. The number in the white box next to the athletes behind the leader will indicate the number of reps by which they trail the person in first place. There are 102 total score repetitions in this test, 34 per round. So at the 13 rep mark, that's when they will move on to the dumbbell, the 35 pound dumbbell for the 21 snatches. And Laura Horbach is there first, followed closely by the entire field. The time to be set by Jamie Simmons in the previous heat of 8.27. Her split time after the first round is 2.35. 34 is the number that Laurel Horvath is looking to hit to get back out on the course for round number two in that second 400 meter run. Ariel Lowen and Alex Kazan are fighting with Alexis Raptus. Take a look at Gabby Magawa. Lowen is inside the herb. There's Laurel Horvath in the leader's jersey. Trying to hold off Emma Lawson, who's to her left. She's in the all blue now. Lawson just couldn't have done though. Horvath on first ball, closely by Ariel Lowen, Emma Watson, Alice Kazan, and Annie Forrest. I think Ariel Lowen is a sleeper pick for this test. She's got a gymnastics background for about 14 years, but then she did track and field, her event being the 400. She's built for this test, but Laura Horvath, what she has done all day, coming off what I would consider a signature test win right before this. And Laura Horvath has proved to us just in these last few rounds that she can run. She's not been the best runner on a machine, but put her on some cement. She's taken off. What about Lowen and Emma Lawson? You can text Jocko to 24672 to get 30% off your order 
at JockoFuel.com. One time use only, good through August 9th, 2023. Get some. Oh, hold on, we're gonna get more points here. 100 points goes to the winner of a test. 97 to second place, and then that total decreases as you work your way down the results. And she has a 10-point lead as well. Hold on, over Emma Lawson, who is in third place on this run. Horvath had the fastest split on the bar muscle-ups of all the athletes in this heat. The only one to break 30 seconds. Horvath, Lawson, and Lowen to the pull-up bar. Essentially the same time. Horvath got about one rep in before Lawson and Lowen started. 47 is the number they got to hit to get back to that 35-pound dumbbell and a classic CrossFit triplet, right? Three movements, fast, uncomfortable. That's where we see the magic happen. We have a monostructural movement, a run. We have the gymnastics with the pole and the bar muscle up. And then we finally have that weightlifting element with that kettlebell, or oh excuse me, dumbbell. Lowen and Lawson done at the same time and out of the dumbbell. And again, it's Horvath with one rep before Lawson and Lowen get started. Lawson just got hit with a no rep. The dumbbell has to hit the ground, go from the ground directly to overhead, and the arm has to be fully extended for that rep to count, and you have to alternate arms with each repetition. And, and that's the challenge here with that dumbbell. For these athletes, 35 is not heavy, so they all have to move quick. And both heads of that dumbbell, you talk about precision and accuracy. It's easy for just one head to kind of bobble and hit. Both sides of that dumbbell head need to touch the floor. Ariel Lowen is now in the lead it looks like according to the scoring hat she looks to be the first woman back to the run for the final time right side of your screen and now a no rep for Orbach and that's going to open the door for Lowen and Lawson. Ariel <laughs> yelling at the crowd on her way out come on let's go. Orbach now is in third with Alex Gazan behind her and Alexis Raptis <laughs> is out of the run. Annie Thor's daughter and Emma Tall getting started as well. These are your leaders here in this final heat. Time to beat is eight minutes, 27.12 seconds. And you're seeing shaking out of the arms. You're seeing relaxed grip. There's a little uphill on the front part of this 400 meter. But on the back side, we do have that downhill taking them into the Coliseum. Ariel Lowen making her third appearance here at the CrossFit Games, her third straight appearance. She gave birth in 2019 to two years off and then qualified for the CrossFit Games in 2021. She finished 14th. Last year, she was 11th. Emma Lawson closing the gap behind her and our leader. Emma Lawson, another former teenage competitor who finished first in the 16 to 17 year old division in 2021. Last year, she made her individual debut and finished in sixth place overall and was the overall leader of one point. Now Lawson starting to close the gap here on Lowen. Lowen will hold out from third. Now it's big for Lowen is nobody's really separating themselves on the bar, but Lowen has the two fastest splits of any athlete on the dumbbell. Here come Lawson and Lowen. Now Raptus has pulled even the ball hold out. Raptus in the all blue, now just starting her bar muscle ups. 12 reps here, got to get to the 81 rep mark to move back to the dumbbell for the final time. If Lowen on the right side of your screen can stay within a rep of Lawson, center lane all blue, she has a shot to pass her on the last 21 reps. Lowen now with one rep remaining. And she will be the first woman to the dumbbell follow closely by Alexis Raptis and Emma Lawson. So Raptis gaining ground here as Laura Horvath is now struggling on the pull-up bar. Alex Gazan in the black top and blue shorts in the middle has passed Horvath. So Laura Horvath is running into some trouble here. She now gets to the dumbbell. She only had a 10-point cushion on Emma Lawson here. 
Rowan is on the right, and she has a frantic pace going here. She's got to get to 102 reps. Hand in the air for her and Raptus as it come down to a race to the finish. Raptus is off first, and what a comeback for Alexis Raptus as Ariel Lowen is in, followed by Emma Lawson. Now, Alex Kazan looks to be the next woman to finish. And she is in. Now, let's keep in mind the times of the prior heats that could factor in here. A no rep for Horvath. And now she is done. So Laura Horvath is in. She's going to take fifth place in the heat, but that's 15th in the test. So Emma Lawson may have a race back deficit as Andy Forrest daughter comes across. Now Gabby McGowan is in. For Alexis Raptus wins her heat. She's gonna finish third in the test and pick up 94 points. It looked like Laura Horvath was threatening to run away with this thing, but then Ariel Lowen and Emma Lawson kept the pressure on, and then Alexis Raptus. <laughs> yeah. Got past her as she went. Got past her as she went. Quick transition right on over to the dumbbell. Felt the pressure from Ariel next door. Here comes Emma Lawson, but it was all Alexis Raptus with this dumbbell. Look at the pace of Alexis Raptus. Cycling it. So fast. Overall results here from the five heats. Jamie Simmons is going to pick up the win. It's the second of her career. Emma Carey finishes second. And it's Alexis Raptus with a great effort at the end to finish in third place. And she is with Nikki Brazier. Alexis, when you are going rep for rep with the women on your left and right, how do you find the energy after at the end of a grueling test like this to pull ahead? Oh, oh my gosh. I mean, I'm like, okay, they're going through it too, so I can do it too, and I just think about that, and I don't want to leave anything on the table. I want to make myself proud, and I did that. Something really special happens here in the Coliseum with this crowd. How does that affect your mentality as an athlete? I love competing in the Coliseum. It is magical, like seriously magical. Thank you guys. Helps so much. Now, you've been through a lot, but there is still so much to come here. What are you most looking forward to? Um, I'm excited for tomorrow. I'm excited to run fast and try and lift pretty heavy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.